Um, my name is John Hemphill. Um, I'm with uh, Morrison and Forster's uh, New York office. I'm one of the uh, co-heads of the emerging company venture capital practice at uh, Morrison and Forster. Uh, I've been doing this type of work for, geez, almost 20 years now, uh, really focusing on uh, technology companies for the past 12 or so years since I came to Morrison and Forster. Uh, we do both company side work and fund side work, um, and uh, we are really, really, really excited to uh, do these events with Funding Post. We are really, really excited to talk to you guys, and we're really, really excited about having this great panel here. Um, and uh, you know, these are very interesting times, I guess, to say the least. Um, so, uh, without further ado, uh, and I understand that the panel has already introduced themselves, so you know everyone on the panel, so we won't. Uh, do that again. Um, by the way, the uh, we, 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 <laughs> at least the last time I looked, the market was still up. So, assuming that uh, that continues, um, maybe the first question we can ask, which is certainly a question on my mind, uh, and we'll start with uh, Morgan uh, directly to my right here, is how has your investment or has your uh, investment focus uh, changed after uh, the events uh, that uh, transpired yesterday? Uh, excuse me. Um, well, I don't think the focus has changed, actually. I think it's... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Um, I think uh, I think you know if you're in our business, I think maybe the other folks will, will agree. You know, you have to take a long-term perspective and and uh, you try to filter the noise as best you can. I think the one thing that we do look at from a uh, and really it's not just yesterday, but it's over the past year is is uh, the, the capital markets risk uh, to the to to your portfolio. Meaning, how do you raise the next round? What's the valuation? Um, so I think what we've done or try to do with our companies is focus on capital efficiency, manage you know, cash uh, tighter, uh, try to um, extend the runway as long as possible, um, given that the, you know, just what's going on, I think, the disruption in capital markets generally. All right, thank you very much. Maybe we can just go down the, uh, the panel here, and each of you can give your thoughts on the question. Uh, maybe, Don, you can go next, and we just go down to the various people. Um, first, I'll say that this has uh, been very good for us. So uh, we're built for uh, high winds and rough seas. So it really hasn't, um, uh, this is the kind of weather that we, we like. Uh, from an investment standpoint, it hasn't really shaken us. Uh, some of this was uh, certainly predicted. You never know what is going to happen tomorrow. Uh, but I think overall it makes you more conscious of the value of cash, of the um, value of having proper risk management, of uh, not being foolish, uh, and of dealing with people who you think are reliable. So if anything, it's really just uh, it, it uh, not refocuses, but it reinforces the focus on uh, prudent business tactics. That's all. And uh, you know we uh, we feel badly about people who are having trouble, but uh, this is the uh, this is the climate. Some of which we feel is of uh, people's own making. Uh, it just shows you how fast things can turn, and it will tell you all that capital is probably going to be more difficult to obtain, and uh, there will probably be more people out there seeking capital for very good ideas, and many of them will have lots of experience. So that means I would think to you that you have to sort of sharpen your presentations a little bit and um, be realistic. Uh, I, I think the main thing that I, I kind of got from this in a sense was, um, let's say, if you're uh, with your company, would you rather be um, uh, fooled from uh, Lehman or would you rather be John Thane from uh, Merrill? I see some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, well, these were two big institutions, and in the case of Lehman, he couldn't make a deal, and the company is bankrupt. In the case of Merrill, uh, they probably didn't make the ideal deal, uh, but they got 50 cents on the dollar, and they still uh, have their benefits and their pensions, and they're still working, and the company is being absorbed. So it wasn't maybe the optimum situation, but it was a realistic situation. And I think that this is just going to make people more uh, realistic, and I would encourage you to be that way too. 
Thank you. Uh, uh, I guess I'm, I'm not sure I would describe this as being good for us. Uh, despite the fact that the best companies and the best investments are made in tough times like this. Although I can't say that from a venture perspective, we're seeing valuations adjust in the private markets the way the public markets are driving us to, towards. So there's a significant disconnect between, certainly in the late stage private valuations, certainly in hot sectors like new media and alternative energy, where valuations are actually at a 20 to 30 percent premiums to what we're seeing in the public markets. And we all know that that doesn't last. So one of them has to correct, uh, and hopefully it's the public markets rebound. Um, having, having said that, uh, if this is, uh, if we're going through an environment where uh, we have a credit crisis and financial balance sheets and financial institutions being cleaned up and the Fed is being dra certainly drastic about uh, how they're doing it, then ultimately in the long, in the long run it's going to be good for everybody. If this, is, if this continues to downward spiral the way certainly everybody felt this weekend and it starts hitting ma Main Street and we're going to a deep recession like some people are forecasting, then this is not going to be good for us. It's going to be very tough for companies to be built. Even if people like us who just raised the fund have $500 million on the sidelines, we're not going to be rushing to deploy it. It's going to be very tough for you who are shipping products to get customers to buy the products while you're burning money every month. We've been through that before, certainly in the, in the, tech, in the tech sector back in 2000, 2001. You all remember the environment. We were all building great products, great management teams. No one wanted to buy them for whatever price because people were, were uh, tightening the belts. And if, if, we're go, if we go into a recessionary environment, uh, like the one that like some people are forecasting, that the, envir the environment will be much more severe than what went through in 2001, 2002. So I guess I'm cautiously optimistic, having said that, uh, you have to watch every penny you spend. You have to watch every long-term commitment you make in terms of leases, in terms of employees, if you want to survive this environment until at least the dust settles. Okay. Uh, in my case, everything I do has got a four, five, seven-year period, so anything that's happening today in the real world has absolutely no impact on me. In fact, with the political campaigns going and the economy being bashed, I had my record year this year. I did six companies and five months. I average one and a half company per year over the 12 years. So this has been a great period. Okay, good.